four things I hate about the Schwinn IC4. Of course I don't actually hate the Schwinn IC4. There's a lot of things to love about this bike. I actually gave the Schwinn IC4 a 78 out of 100 in my full and concise tail happy score review of this bike. If you want to see my full review of this bike, I'll put a card to it up here or a link down in the description box. The Schwinn IC4 actually makes a really good Peloton alternative, but this bike is not perfect. So here is the four things I hate about the Schwinn IC4. So it's really nice that the Schwinn IC4 comes with dual water bottle holders for you. It even comes with a pair of three pound weights and weight holders attached to the bottom of the water bottle holders. And the water bottle holders are placed in a very convenient place where you can easily grab your water bottle and uh, get a drink. Unfortunately for me and many other people, these water bottle holders tend to get in the way of your knees. So as I ride the Schwinn IC4, my knees will easily hit these water bottle holders. And if I have an actual water bottle in there, uh, I basically am going to for sure hit my knees on these water bottles when I get out of the saddle. Of course, there are workarounds to this. You could take your water bottle out and maybe set it like this and hope it doesn't fall out on you. But for me, even if I don't have a water bottle in there at all, my knees can still hit the actual water bottle holder. Yeah, I just uh, don't really like hitting my knees on the water bottles. One solution to this problem I have seen is, as you can see here, there are two bolts holding this in. I've seen a picture of these two bolts removed and instead of using this one, just basically move this entire assembly out a little bit and just plug basically this one into this hole and then you just use some sort of zip tie contraption to affix the other one. Fortunately, if the water bottle holder is a big problem, you can simply remove it by just not putting these four screws in and then you can remove the entire assembly. Of course, yes, I am six foot five, so I am a little bit taller than the normal person, so probably most people aren't gonna have this problem. And fortunately, the Schwinn IC4 does have the ability to move the handlebars forwards and backwards, so you can get those water bottles a little bit further away from you. Unfortunately, that means it has to move the entire handlebars away from you, and personally, I don't really like to ride with the handlebars really stretched out. But even with the handlebars extended all the way forward, I still can hit my knees on those water bottles. The handlebars are all the way forward right now and my knees are still hitting these relatively short water bottles. Unlike some of the other budget-friendly bikes I've reviewed, the Schwinn IC4 actually comes with a pretty useful mini screen. However, the second and third thing I hate about the Schwinn IC4 actually have to do with the mini screen. To get this screen to turn on, you simply have to kick the pedals over and it'll power right up. Taking a closer look at the mini screen, we can see important metrics such as cadence, resistance level, and heart rate monitor are available on the mini screen. You also get speed, calories, and distance. The second thing that I hate about the Schwinn IC4 is actually the way that the cadence is displayed in like a little bar format here. So it doesn't give you a particular number for your cadence. Why can't we just get cadence displayed in a number format as well? Now, yes, the Schwinn IC4 does allow you to cast your cadence to other apps like the Peloton digital app and many other apps. But if you just want to ride with a little mini screen here and not hook up all the external gadgets, it makes it pretty difficult to know what your RPMs are here, what your cadence is just by looking at this bar display. And not only is it hard to see exactly what your cadence is, but it does top out at 125, which really honestly speaking, who's gonna be pedaling faster than 125 anyway? But honestly, with everything else here displayed in a number format, why couldn't they just add the cadence in a number format as well? And as I just mentioned, the third thing I hate about the Schwinn IC4 also has to do with the mini screen. This bike is magnetic resistance and it measures your resistance level and it also measures your cadence, which that means it can and does know your power output estimate. However, the Schwinn IC4, for whatever reason, does not give you a power output measurement on the mini screen. Okay, so we have all these other metrics on the screen. Why can't we simply just get a little power display right there on the mini screen? That'd make this bike so much better, right? If you hook this bike up to Zwift or another app, you can get your power output displayed on those apps. However, one of the apps that it does not give you your power output to 
is the Peloton digital app. And with all of the app compatibility, which is great, why can't we get a power output metric display to the Peloton app? The Peloton digital app is probably the number one app that this bike is used on. So is it Peloton not allowing this to happen or what's the deal? Why can you get power output on Zwift and all these other platforms, but Peloton, is it Peloton? Is it Schwinn? What's the deal? Why can't we have it? Give me the power. And why can we get a power output measurement to Zwift and many other platforms, but it won't even give you a power estimate here on the mini screen. I know I am being a little bit nitpicky here in this video, but these are the tough questions to ask about this bike. The Peloton bike gives you your power output. So does the Kaiser M3i. The Nordic Trek S22i gives you a power output measurement. And so does the Echelon EX4. So why can't the Schwinn IC4 simply give us a quick little easy power output measurement? measurement right here on the screen. And as I said, you can hook up third-party apps like Zwift and many other apps and get your power output measurement, but it would be nice if they would just give it to us right on the screen. And also, it'd be awesome if the Peloton digital app allowed you to have your power displayed right up there with your heart rate and your cadence. The fourth and final thing I hate about the Schwinn IC4 actually has to do with the pedals. But it's not actually the pedals themselves. These pedals are actually pretty decent. They come with a SPD clip-in on one side and they have a cage style pedal on the other side. So this is a good pedal for the more serious rider as well as the casual rider. The thing that I hate about the Schwinn IC4 pedals is they seem to have a common problem where one of the pedals seems to come loose on its own every now and then. So here's an example of what the pedal will sound like if it's loose. You can kind of just hear like a little bit of a thumping noise. And the movement is probably too much to even notice that it's moving, but there is like a small click to it. So if you notice this click noise, just get out the old pedal wrench and just tighten it down. Then you shouldn't hear that click noise anymore. So the pedal issue isn't like a huge deal, but you should definitely pay attention to your pedals if you have the Schwinn IC4. If you start to hear a clicking noise or something, be sure to check that pedal because you don't want those threads to strip and you don't want the crank arm to strip. It's kind of just something that you should be aware of as a Schwinn IC4 owner. My pedals on the Schwinn IC4 have come loose a couple times and it just kind of makes a little clicking noise and if you pay attention to it, you'll know what's happening and all you do is just tighten that pedal up and you should be good to go. One potential solution to this problem is to swap out the pedals completely to something different, but a more sensible solution may be to add a little bit of blue Loctite to the pedal thread and that should help keep the pedal on the bike and not come loose. It's not all hate for the Schwinn IC4. I actually really like this bike and I gave it a tail happy score of 78 in my full review, which I'll link to in a card up here and down in the description box below. So if you wanna see a full review of the Schwinn IC4, watch that. It's my concise and thorough review with a tail happy score. These are simply four downfalls of the Schwinn IC4 in my eyes. So if you learned anything in this video or you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.